You're listening to the Heart and Hustle podcast. We are your hosts, Abby McLeod and Lindsay Roman. Thank you so much yet again for tuning into the show. We love having you here every single week and just coming along together in this journey of entrepreneurship. Leave a review if you have not already. I'll just throw that in there. <laughs> if you have left a five-star review. Yeah, five stars would be the key information in that Uh sentence. Okay. we It helps us out so much as we bring you free content week after week. Okay. Now today's conversation is with an absolutely incredible female entrepreneur, and we are so excited for this conversation. So if you are a mom or a want-to-be mom, and you have ever felt that struggle of, you know, business and entrepreneurship and scaling and growth and all of this with also wanting to be a very present and intentional mom and you felt that you have to choose between the two camps or, you know, whatever. It's just, it feels overwhelming. We have a treat for you. So today we're bringing you onto the show, Amanda Moffat. And Amanda is a powerhouse of radically simple and yet highly effective business strategies that intersect at faith, family, and fierce entrepreneurship. She is a devoted Christian, wife to her husband, Nathan, and mom of two littles. She was once a ballerina who traveled the world for her dancing. Amanda then leapt her way into the realm of high-level entrepreneurship, driven by an insatiable, insatiable love for scaling business businesses with God and family at the center. After years of building her own businesses, Amanda noticed a gap with a high-level business education and the female Christian values, so she chose to bridge that divide and founded Pursuit, an online haven for high-performing Christian businesswomen. Amanda is on a crusade to empower women with the tools they need for seamless and joyful business scaling. And we are so excited to have her on our show today. So today's episode, we dived in with Amanda all on how to truly scale your business and also be a present wife and mother who values your faith and your family above your business, which is pretty hard when you're a driven woman and women, woman, and you want to do both of those things. Mm -hmm. We dive in with Amanda all about her very, very tangible and practical tips on how to actually do the elusive word of balancing entrepreneurship as well as motherhood and faith. Um, And she gives some really, really good tips for that. We dive into processes, SOPs. She's going to get all into that goodness today. Six-pillar framework, her like proven six pillar framework for her business. Uh huh. Two things that she does every single day throughout her momming uh, that just make her a better businesswoman. She goes so practical today yes. in today's conversation, which was brilliant. Um, and then at the end, we just, uh, her heart for her family and her faith shines through so much. Tears were shed. Like it was such a good and just enriching conversation. Yes. And if you're a mom or a wannabe mom and a business owner or a wannabe business <laughs> owner, stay tuned and let's welcome Amanda onto the show. Hey, hey, I'm Lindsay Roman. And I'm Evie McLeod. And we are family and legacy focused serial entrepreneurs and the founders of The Heart University, a business education company with a mission to help you thrive in your business and life. Welcome to our Entrepreneur Cocktail Hour, where business and marketing strategies meet faith, real talk, and raw and life-changing conversations. At the end of the day, we are all in this together, figuring out how to navigate the ups and downs, the messy and the beautiful, and everything in between. This is a community where you can come as you are, get inspired, and walk away equipped to build a legacy-filled life. You're listening to the Heart and Hustle Podcast. Amanda, welcome to the Heart and Hustle Podcast. We are so excited to have you on the show today. Oh my goodness, you guys. Thank you for having me. It is such a joy to be with you. And I'm just so excited for this conversation. Oh, it's going to be a good one. We are we are <laughs> yes. ready. Okay, for anyone who is unfamiliar with you or would love to have a little bit of a, a backstory and a preface as we dive into today's very wonderful, meaty, juicy conversation, um, are you willing to share a little bit about who you are and what you do and your journey? Yes, of course. So I, first of all, I was a ballet dancer and I traveled the world for ballet, Spain, Austria, New York, Seattle, so many places. And so I grew up in that very, very disciplined world and that Mm -hmm. very niched, high focused type world from a very young age. So goal setting and achieving was always 
it, it was always there. It was always yeah. super prevalent and on my mind from a very, very young age. And so throughout the years of traveling and doing things like that and having these incredible opportunities, I started to find that, oh my goodness, I it feels like I have to choose do I do this as a profession or do I focus on family? I want to get married. I'm also a strong Christian. And so I knew I wanted to have children and I knew I loved business, but I was also a ballet dancer. So I didn't know what those looked like. And then as God always does, he brought literally the most perfect opportunity to me on a silver platter wrapped up in a bow at the age of, I was literally 17. Mm. I was offered an opportunity to buy a dance studio. So it was literally the craziest marriage of business, which I knew I was interested in and my entire world at the time, which was the professional ballet world. And so I thought, you know, the worst that can happen is I go back to not having this business that I didn't have in the first place. So I worked my butt off. I bought this business Literally two months after I graduated high school, I was 18. I knew absolutely nothing. When I tell you that I knew zero, (laughs) I mean it. And I learned the hard way. I did so many things wrong. I made so many mistakes. I tried to learn so quickly from every single one. I doubled my revenue in the first year, scaled from there. I hired, fired, built my dream team and implemented systems to the point where literally just about four months ago now, I gave birth to my second baby on our first day of like dance studio classes for the year. And so obviously I wasn't there in person, Mm -hmm. but there were zero hiccups because I had the team in place. I had the systems in place. I took my maternity leave without stress. I didn't have to worry. The numbers didn't drop. And so that's pretty much where I come from is how Mm -hmm. do we create as Christian women, Mm -hmm. these businesses that are so much more than just money. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to have financial flexibility and freedom. But when you're a Christian woman, and when you are passionate about the things of God, and you are passionate about prioritizing your family, Mm -hmm. having a wonderful marriage, having strong relationships with your children, raising your children in that Christian lifestyle, you need to have your priorities straight and you need to have your head on straight. Um, Being a woman is such a blessing and it's, it's just an incredible ride when you're doing it in entrepreneurship. (laughs) So it's, it's definitely been an adventure. Um, From there, I got so passionate about helping other people do this because you look left and right and you just see so many burnt out, stressed Mm. out, business owners Mm -hmm. and business women who are just so amazing. They're so incredible and they have so much to offer, but they are just bogged down because they don't have the knowledge, tools, resources, Mm -hmm. but they can do it if they have the right help. And so that is what I do. I teach other women how to scale while never, ever sacrificing their faith and their family. Mm -hmm. And so It's just one of my biggest joys in life to help other lovely ladies do this. Oh, oh I God. love it. You are in the right yes. place, girlfriend. We <laughs> yes. are in welcome company. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, that's a perfect lead off into this first question. Like, we have so many listeners that are mamas, mm-hmm. that are believers. Mm-hmm. Or and want to be moms. Who or, want to be yeah. moms or who are running a business or want to run a business mm-hmm. or moms or want to be moms. All the camps. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, all the combinations. Yeah, all the combinations. And it's that elusive question of how do you do both? Because mm-hmm. it feels like so often mm-hmm. we have to choose. And and, and the yes. world, I think, likes to tell us that we have to choose. Um, so if, if you believe that balance is is achievable, uh, the elusive question is how do we begin mm-hmm. to, wh- what would be the first step in trying to achieve that balance of scaling a business, but also truly prioritizing your faith in your family? Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Well, first of all, the word balance I know can have so many negative connotations because sure, we can say all of the nice things. It looks great on an article. It looks great on a podcast title. It feels good to look at on a pretty Instagram post. But when you're actually the mom waking up on a random Tuesday morning with little children that you're feeding and caring for and loving on, and this dream in business, it's like, well, that's all great. But like, how though? Mm. Like, tell me actually how. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I get it. I'm right there. So a few things that have been so tangibly helpful and have actually practically helped me with this is number one, you need to stop listening to the world's input of this is how you should be a good mom. Mm. Shut off all of your social media, all of your, whatever you're listening to, Mm -hmm. go to God's word, go to scripture. You need to prioritize him first. If you are strong with him, if you have a relationship with him, that is truly a solid, solid foundation. It's not built on sand. You can weather any storm. I truly mean that. So that is number one foundational. Something so practical, and I'm so excited to share this with your listeners. I've never, I don't think I've ever heard a few of these things before. Just super practical tips for moms who are like, but how do I do it though? (laughs) Please help me. (laughs) So a few things that I do is my voice to text on my phone, like when you speak into the phone and it types it out for you, is my best friend, okay? It is shocking how much content I can create, write, strategize, how many ideas for future launches, projects, offers that I can organize and get out of my brain while I'm doing laundry, while I'm making breakfast, Mm -hmm. while I'm letting my car warm up. I live in a very cold area, so you have to do that (laughs) while I'm literally just doing random stuff. And then when I go to actually sit down and literally do work like at my computer and I'm ready to focus, I'm not making all this stuff up right then and there. And I don't feel pressured because I have nine pages of just random content that I can pull any sentence from and expand upon. Or Mm -hmm. I write out like complete thoughts and I just have to make some paragraph spacers or, you know, finish out the, the final touches of the content. But voice to text, practically, if you were to just follow me around in my life, honestly, that probably creates 70 to 80% of what you see out there on my podcast, Mm -hmm. on my social media, Pinterest, whatever it may be. Literally, I did that in random areas of my life, not sitting down to focus with a quiet background. And, you know, yeah. And so it's just that flexibility. But voice to text moms, if you're not utilizing it, please try. It is. (laughs) It's a blessing for your life. Um, Another thing that tangibly has really helped me is my one place method. I, I teach this to my clients and I talk about it a lot, but having everything of one specific area of your life in one place Mm -hmm. is a life changing. So all of your financials in one specific Google drive folder, or I use Asana in my business, one specific column, and you have all your links there to your bank stuff and whatever Mm -hmm. it is, however you organize all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, But the one place method of, you know, every single different area of your life, personal and business, have one place that you put every single thing rather than, you know, texting team members and emailing them and Slack and Asana and Trello, you will get so overwhelmed so quickly, Mm -hmm. but have that like one place mindset. It'll make your life as a mom and business owner and that kind of juggling it all mentality. It'll make it so much easier. So Mm -hmm. those are two things that truly are literally going through my head every single day that Mm -hmm. make the difference as a really busy mom. Mm. That is so good. Like you just jumped straight to the tangible and my like tangible loving brain just was like, yes. (laughs) Yes. Noted. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not a fluffy girl. I I try (laughs) to do the fluff and the, and like, I love it. I love the, the bird's eye view and the Mm -hmm. higher level thinking. Like I am so here for, I'm so here for it. 
But, you know, a good bullet point list of like literal <laughs> practical things to yeah. do every day is is my love language. For yeah. sure. so good. I, ha- I have a follow up question based on the voice text. So if you like mm-hmm. you're doing the dishes and your kids are screaming, let's paint this mm-hmm. scenario here <laughs> like mm-hmm. and and you get an idea because I mean, that's obviously like it, it, it's there for yeah. like, hey, you get an idea. What does that practically look like? Like, are you are you r- saying verbally the content that you're actually like that you would write later? Or are you saying like, I want to, like, like, I mean, like chicken scratch, but verbally. Does that make sense? Like, uh-huh. like I want to like create a post on such and such and talk about like that. Or is it like you're verbally saying exactly what the, the content would be? Does that make sense? I literally, yes. I literally say what the content is because later when I go to edit it and create my stuff, it's so much easier. So if Mm. I have a thought that, you know, I'm just thinking all day or I see my kids do something and I'm like, oh my gosh, that applies to business owners too. Whatever it is, when it pops into my brain, I just quickly go to that Google Doc because it's in one place because the one place method. (laughs) I go to that Google Doc. I literally just hit record and I write out or I speak out a paragraph-ish. I just let my thoughts flow and then I click it off. I don't even look. I don't analyze. I don't edit right there. I just literally turn it off. My day wasn't stopped. My kid's day wasn't stopped. I didn't Mm. stop doing my chore. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't difficult. But if you do that a few times a day, even one time a day for months and months, when you go down, when you go to sit down and you're actually then doing the work, it's like, oh my gosh, literally 85% of this is done. Yeah. I have to do final touches. Or if you have someone doing your social media for you or whatever the task is, they do final touches. You sprinkle on the last 5% or something. Yeah. Done. Check. Yeah. Easy. It's not yeah. overwhelming anymore. Yeah. That's so good. Okay, wait, I don't mm-hmm. want to get hung up on this one too much, but mm-hmm. but I genuinely, I have a, a logistical question follow-up as yes. well because you. it sounds like you mentioned that you use a Google, like a Google doc Mm -hmm. and your voice on on your phone, on your phone and your, your voice dictating through that. My logistical question is I personally rarely use the dictate, like, like the voice Mm -hmm. to text. I use recordings, like audio recordings more often than Mm -hmm. not. Like the voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like voice memo or, you know, whatever, because I've found that the dictate for me gets so much of what I'm saying wrong and it like can't keep up. And then I'll go back later and I don't even understand what I was saying because I feel like it dictated it wrong. So I'm curious if you have found that to be the case at all. If it's just me, maybe I talk too fast or don't <laughs> enunciate well. I don't know what it is. <laughs> She's like, Evie, get with the program. <laughs> just speak but clearly. I'm like, I'm also <laughs> curious because I've only ever really tried it with like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say the, the phrase because she'll pop up, but like, hey, phone but we all know who mm-hmm. we're talking to. Like, hey, phone, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, take dictate a note or, you know, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe, I don't know if it's different using like a Google Doc. Or like maybe Google Docs has a better, it actually tracks it better. I don't know. I, I'm just curious because yeah. I've, I've like personally tried it and I did not like it, but you're like living by it. So I'm like, wait, yes. I want to know if I'm missing out on something here or if I need to try it again because it's it's been a while since I really did it like intentionally. Yeah, yeah, interesting point. Um the first thing that pops into my head is, well, you know, in all of business ownership, you have to do what is right for you, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. So if the voice memos work really well for your lifestyle, that is beautiful and amazing. And all day long, use the voice memos. <laughs> you know, it is what makes your life easier, simpler, yeah. more efficient, more joyful. Yeah. So if the voice memos work for you, yes, please, all day, every day. I personally don't use the name we're not going to say so she doesn't <laughs> pop up. I, I actually don't use her. Um, I literally just like tap open to my Google Doc like app on my phone. I keep it right there accessible because I literally live this every day. Um, so I just literally go to it. And then I click the like little microphone and yeah, I speak my heart out and it's done. I love this. I'm like getting, we're like getting so hung up on your first point. This is, she's like, she's like one little tidbit. We're like, okay, (laughs) hang on. Let's sit here for 20 minutes. But it's so good. It's so helpful. I mean, it saves me hours. Oh, I bet. Yes. It saves me mental energy. Like the strain of content creation doesn't exist for me anymore. Yep. 
That's so good. I'm just like, I'm literally, if you're watching on YouTube, I have my phone up because I didn't, I didn't frankly know that you could voice dictate on a Google Doc. I knew, mm-hmm. but I, I'm curious. I really want to try it now because like, I'm really oh, curious. This? No. <laughs> is it? Wait, okay. Just logistical de- question. We're derailing. Okay. Is, I'll Hello? open a Google Doc. <laughs> Oh, okay. So is it... No, but it says is hello. Oh, okay. So so is it... It's using the microphone on like your keyboard from... Oh my gosh, yes. it's actually dictating extremely accurately. The last time I exactly. did this, it absolutely did Maybe not. Maybe it's just technology Hold, becoming please. better. It's been, it's been a few years since I really mm-hmm. like tried it a ton and it was... It was bad last We're time. We're just going to dictate lie. this entire podcast episode. Wow, we would, make <laughs> our, we would make our podcast manager's life so much easier if we just did this and this was the transcription. This was her transcription. She didn't have to listen through. Well, wait. Oh, she could yes. do it. She could do it listening back to the episode. Actually, Zencaster already I actually has think she, I also feel like she does that. Anyways. Yeah, that's fine. We're derailing very okay. fast. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's super accurate for me. And what I like about having that versus like voice memos is when I go to work on it, it's literally yep. written already. Like it's yeah. literally done. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think we we would have to be a little less basket, Casey, because it, it it's getting is, a little chaotic. I'm getting a little chaotic and excited. And it's, if you're just, you know, speaking clearly... Okay, I love this. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, we're moving I on. Want to, I want to, <laughs> to move on to maybe, because we talked about you love being a little like a logistical, you know, gal, mm-hmm. pal here on the show. So what are some systems or processes? Obviously, you talked about mm-hmm. a few like, you know, logistical, here are little tidbits of ways to, you know, really use your time wisely. But I want to almost dive into that a little further because as Mm -hmm. someone who has a team, who runs a business, you know, all this stuff, you, I'm sure, live by systems and processes. So are you down to kind of share some of those that have really helped you separate your business Mm -hmm. from your family and what you're building there and not just take over your whole life? Yes, 100%. So, and this kind of ties back to what we talked about before, making your life simpler and easier. Mm -hmm. Something that a business mentor taught me once is she literally gave me a ruler and she says, this is now your simple stick. This is what we call your simple stick. I want it to live on your desk. I want it to sit next to your computer every day. And whenever you get overwhelmed or you have to create a playbook or create a process or a standard operating procedure or whatever it is, you make sure you have your simple stick with you and do not make it complicated I want you to feel calm and joyful rather than overwhelmed at the end of the process. So Mm -hmm. what the simple stick has done for me mentally is it reminds me to literally just not make it more complicated than it has to be because I have systems for days. Mm -hmm. And when you have, it's so ironic because a lot of business owners that I talk to, they'll have systems in place, but then when they walk me through them or they show them to me or they need help with them or something, my first thought is, oh my goodness, this is so complicated and Mm -hmm. just so intense. No wonder you're overwhelmed. And so what I teach then is you need to tap it with the simple stick, not once, not twice, but like 10 times over. (laughs) So things like, um, let me think here, um, like team communication. So I mentioned that I use Asana. Mm -hmm. For example, I have a board in Asana literally called SOPs, Standard Operating Procedure Procedures. And then inside, when you click on that board, you'll see the different pillars of business. And the different pillars, um, there are six that I teach on. It's leadership, team, profit, offer, marketing, and operations. Mm. And so if you have a solid knowledge, understanding, and organization around each of the six pillars in your business, you are going to fly. You're going to soar because if you only have like one or two or three, but you're missing the others, you will start to feel it. You'll feel the burnout. You'll Mm -hmm. feel the stress. You'll feel it. Um, It'll become apparent after a while. So long story short, once you go into the board you of standard operating procedures, you'll see the six pillars. And then under each of those, I literally have like literal tasks that have to be done in the business, like how to refund somebody, how to answer this type of email, everything you can imagine in each of those six pillars. 
anything that I would ever have to do or know, anything a team member would ever have to do or know, I literally have it written out completely detailed with a video if necessary, with notes, examples, templates. You want to make it so easy for your team Mm -hmm. to where it'd be like impossible for them to not understand it and not Mm -hmm. be able to do it without you. You know, you want to make it it like so crazy easy and so crazy um, simple, simple, yeah. simple, simple. And so I have everything documented, everything written out. And every single time a team member comes to me with a question that I haven't answered, or maybe I haven't answered it clearly, or it's a new thing that we have never had to address before or something like that, it gets added to that board. It gets mm-hmm. added right away, clearly, thoroughly the first mm-hmm. time so that every single time after that, it's a rinse and repeat. You don't have to reinvent the wheel over and over again. You're making your life so hard when you reinvent the wheel over Mm -hmm. and over. And so So I don't want, I don't want entrepreneurs lives to be stressful and tiresome, especially moms, especially Mm -hmm. moms and wives who want to be there with their children and they want to enjoy a Wednesday beach day just because they can and they don't have to stress about their business because they've done the intentional work ahead of time with practical systems like what I just mentioned with the SOP board and having Mm -hmm. literally every single tiny thing in there. Oh, so good. I cannot even understate to our listeners how important what she just said. You mean overstate? What did I say? Understate. (laughs) But but I think you meant... Overstate. I meant like it's important. You cannot so. em- overemphasize. Yeah, that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what like, I mean okay. to say, yeah, you're like, uh, okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, I, what she said was very important. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, just especially as you grow, and especially for moms and, and just people wanting to prioritize their family and their personal life. Just mm-hmm. if you are a slave to your business and you're not a, and you're mm-hmm. not having a process for anything even if you're a solopreneur, you're not going to have a system or a process. I know we keep saying that word, but for anything that you do. And so every time you get a new client or every time you have to do something for the second time, you're going to have to reinvent the wheel unless every your brain time. remembers it. And and then but even the so. headache of it hiring people to do it for you and then you don't have a process. It's like a whole thing. Yeah. So I love that you... Yeah. Just said that. And then if you start franchising your business, then that's a whole mm-hmm. other conversation of like SOPs help you so, so much with that. Yeah. So I, I'm so glad that you mentioned that. I have a question. When you started implementing that, what was the process when it first began? Like when you first, did you do this like from day one and you were like, I'm just a brilliant person and I just know? <laughs> or was there a moment where you didn't have SOPs and you were like, oh, my life is like drowning. I need to change something. With my first business with the dance studio, I did not start it from day one because I knew nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, but with my business now, which is Pursuit, I don't know if we've said that, but I own a company called Pursuit. It's for um, Christian online coaches and service providers. And with Pursuit, I did start from day one because I knew better this time. Um, and so when you know better, you do better. Yeah. And Yeah. So it literally just looks like the everyday practical steps of, oh my gosh, yeah, team member, that makes a lot of sense. Really good point. Let me open up my laptop, add a little card into Asana, screenshot what you're talking about. Perfect. Check done. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That never has to be a big deal ever again. Mm -hmm. So it's literally as simple as that. Like I said, simple stick, simple stick, simple stick. Do not overcomplicate it. Don't get stressed by this. It shouldn't be an overwhelming process. It should be little by little here and there, kind of like the the voice to text. Mm -hmm. It's a little here, it's a little there. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, I have... 10 really awesome, helpful things right here in front of me that I never have to reinvent the wheel for again. My team member has them now forever. It's, Mm -hmm. it truly is tiny little micro imperfect actions consistently, consistently Mm -hmm. over long periods of time. And that is how multi-million and billion dollar companies are formed. It Mm -hmm. really is. It's true. It's so As you were talking, mm-hmm. I, I one of our mentors, she owns a uh, donut shop here in our town, and she was talking about SOPs with me, and she was saying well, she's they like, own like ten businesses, but yeah, that's yes, one that's of them. One of them. <laughs> um, yeah. But she was saying she was like, you have to do SOPs for even things that you think are like stupid easy. Mm-hmm. She was like, yes. we uh, they own a donut shop, and one of the items like on the savory side is a bacon egg and cheese sandwich, and she was mm-hmm. like, you would think 
that would be obvious on what goes in that sandwich. <laughs> the title uh-huh. says it all. And she was like, until one day, like we had an employee that, that d- d- I don't know if they missed an ingredient or they just put it in the wrong order. And that affects how the cheese melts, which impacts like um, how a customer, mm-hmm. re- like it could taste different. Yeah. It could be, it, if it's, if it's in the wrong order, it might not, you know, mm-hmm. the egg might not melt perfectly with the cheese. This is obviously a very tangible food example, but still, yeah. it's not the exact same. And so a customer mm-hmm. could come in and get a completely different sandwich the second time they order it, even though it's yeah. the exact same sandwich, yeah. just because the SOP wasn't installed in place of being like, here's how you make a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Mm-hmm. You put the bacon and then the egg and then the cheese <laughs> on a croissant. Okay. Like, yes. it's like <laughs> mm-hmm. so don't over, I, I love that you just said like the simple stick because that's so true. It's like even yeah. stupid things that you think are obvious are not obvious to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is so much 100%. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. Okay, I have a question for you, Amanda. On this conversation, because obviously you have built and scaled a beautiful business and you're talking a lot about you know having a team and having SOPs for your team and different things and communication and like, you know, you know your SOP board and Asana for your team to review. Is there... Mm-hmm something from your experience that you can give to the solopreneur right now who's listening, who's like, okay, I know I should have, you know, systems and like SOPs in place, but Mm -hmm. I don't have a team to communicate that to right now. And so it almost feels a little like unnecessary at this point. Is there an example or something that you can give of like, hey, here's a great place to start with setting Mm -hmm. up like a system, even if it is like, hey, document an SOP for yourself for yourself to understand. Like it can be that, but I could hear somebody listening to this and being like, that's awesome. I, that makes sense. You'd want to have SOPs for a team. I don't have a mm-hmm. team. I'm a solopreneur. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, even if you're a solopreneur, why wouldn't you want to make your own life easier? Mm-hmm. It's great to make a team's life easier. And that's amazing. And definitely you should, especially if you want to <laughs> truly scale and scale with joy and success. But mm. don't you want your life to be joyful and simple and wonderful as well? And sure, of course, as a business owner, as the creator of your dream business, of course, you are the one who knows certain things inside and out. And you don't even have to think about it anymore. But and I know a lot of people that listen to this podcast, a lot of people who follow me, they are ambitious, awesome women who do want to scale at least a little bit, at least to have an assistant or a social media manager or at least a little bit of help here and there. Mm -hmm. And when that time comes, how amazing would it be for you to literally have the keys to Mm -hmm. those 10 tasks that this new role is going to take over for for you? And you say, here you go. I already have screen recordings of me doing it for two years and it's all there. And here's the Google doc with examples and here's the email template. Yeah. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Ask me if you have any questions, like how incredible would it be for you to have actually a pretty easy time offloading certain tasks rather than, okay, now I'm ready to hire my first assistant or now I'm ready Mm -hmm. to hire someone to help me with my email marketing. Okay. So where do I start though? Yeah. I'm so overwhelmed because I have nothing ready. It's all in my brain. And now I'm really stressed, you know, yeah, so you good. do not want that. Why would you do that to yourself intentionally? You know, yeah. so mm-hmm. write out and film yourself doing things that you think, like you were saying, mm-hmm. are crazy simple and mm-hmm. quote unquote self-explanatory Yeah, because it's going to make your life better mm-hmm. in the future. I mean, tenfold, a hundredfold. And And honestly, it's great to see for yourself too. Yeah, so true. I think uh, Mm -hmm. what I find often with like coaching students and just podcast listeners even is I think people don't want to do that for the temporary annoyance it will be Mm -hmm. or the temporary time it will take. It's like, oh, it takes, you know, an extra few minutes during a task. I mean, and I'm not exempt from this, y'all. I have yet mm-hmm. to make new hashtags for like my, like since moving to Florida for like mm-hmm. wedding photography in Florida. That's a very niche example. But like, and so every time mm-hmm. I post. It's a little I, thing that wouldn't take that long. It really but. wouldn't. <laughs> right. But yet right. here I am. <laughs> like, But it's like we yeah. avoid something because it'll take time right now, but it will save in the long time run. so much. So yeah. I love that you mentioned mm-hmm. that just because even if you're a solopreneur, it, like make processes and systems for yourself because especially mm-hmm. then as a mom mm-hmm. or even just like a person who has a, a husband or, or, you know, family in general, mm-hmm. like if you want to 
live life and not be chained to your business Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. it just takes so much longer to do all these things from scratch again and again and again, Mm -hmm. unless you have a process. So I feel like we're beating a dead horse. We got it. (laughs) No, it's so true. And can I add one fun thing for the entrepreneur who is thinking that and feeling that like, oh man, but it takes like half an hour right now. And I know how to do it. So why would I log it or whatever? Mm-hmm. I have an idea for you. Okay. Cause I'm all about making things fun and like actually enjoyable. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like to enjoy my life. I like to have fun. My husband and I love to go on dates and trips and it's a good time. So I like to bring that into my business too, because why do you want it to feel all bogged down and stressful? Yeah. So I have an idea for the entrepreneur who's thinking that take yourself on a little dream date and call it, you know, your loose ends dream date or your Mm. like finally writing it all down dream date (laughs) and go to your favorite coffee shop, get your favorite drink, put on a cute outfit. Or if you want to cuddle up at home in a cozy little spot, whatever brings you joy, whatever you want to do, take yourself on a little dream date, sit yourself down and do those things, all the little loose ends in your mind that are like, oh my gosh, I should update those hashtags. Oh, I should do that. Like they're all two to 10 minute tasks. Mm -hmm. Make a, like a brain dump list of all of them. Sit yourself down, have a cozy snack and drink and do every single one right then and there. Mm. Like the amount that will be taken off of your brain after that is so much. I mean, we are always having that in the back of our brain, you know, Mm. every single little thing that we didn't do that it'll only take a little, but then we kind of don't do it. Those things weigh us down. And for the moms out there, you have like 100 million of those, not just for yourself, but for the little people in your life (laughs) that you are keeping alive and nurturing and loving. And like your husband and your friends and your church community, just take it off your brain, sit yourself down for a nice little time, get it all done at once you will feel so yeah. good and just have a fun time with it or your favorite so food. Go to a nice restaurant by yourself, you know? That That's reminds so me good. of Atomic Habits, like stacking a habit mm-hmm. that you don't want to do oh, yeah. with a habit that you like. That mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, so good. good. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, hey, do you want to schedule like a, a coinciding dream date for all the little things that yes. we have to do? High five. All right. Thank yes. you, Amanda, for <laughs> yes. encouraging us to do that. That's great. Yes. I love it. Um, and it makes oh. it fun and positive too. Yeah, absolutely. It's so true. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to ask a question? I'd... Yeah. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious as we talk about this concept of of really building, it's still possible to build a really successful business, a, you know, a really like scaled up business and, you know, to do it while prioritizing family. I'm curious if you have either any like practical, you know, things that you've seen from people that you coach or in your own business, like how does it work to have, you know, a very, very successful Mm -hmm. business, um, but also have your family as the number one priority and like not Mm -hmm. have it overtake your life? Or if it's not like something super practical, even just some like encouragement, some words of wisdom that you would want to share with our listeners of like, here's, you know, some things that I would like to share with you. I've learned whatever that is. Yes. Oh my goodness. Of course. I have two things. One is super emotional and philosophical and the other is extremely practical. So I love that combo. (laughs) Yes, I know. It's my favorite combo. So (laughs) the first thing is when I was like eight months pregnant with my first baby, my daughter, I, I think I was like end of eight months. I was close. I was very, very pregnant. Um, I remember having this thought process of like, I was pretty much just crying out to the Lord, like, God, I am so scared. I am so, so scared. I don't hear any moms talking about how afraid they are Mm -hmm. about what's going to happen to my business and my, my very real dreams and my very real ambitions and hopes for the future when I have this baby. And because I I had not had any children yet, I I just didn't know. There was so much unknown. And and I literally just sat there crying like, Lord, I feel so guilty for feeling this way. I feel so guilty for crying about this blessing of a child. Mm -hmm. But I also feel guilty as a almost new mom because 
I do have these other dreams too. I'm Mm -hmm. still Amanda who does want to pursue these things. And it was basically just a moment of, Lord, what do I do? Please help me. My heart is hurting. You know, I'm in a very painful spot and I'm going to get emotional. So I walked into my office and I remember it so clearly. It was almost as if I I heard him audibly saying like, Amanda, now you're not going to do anything differently. You're just going to bring her with you. You are going to build this for me and with me, and you're going to bring your daughter with you. I'm going to cry. (laughs) Like she, it's not an instead. You are not working instead of being a good mom. You are bringing her into it. You are going to teach her what it's like to help and serve other people. You are going to show her what it's like to pursue a dream and prioritize your marriage and your children. You are going to show her these beautiful things, these beautiful gifts. You're not going to do them instead of her. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you I broke down sobbing Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it was such a special revelation for me because up until the, up until that point, literally so close to my due date, I, I had so much fear and anxiety around this topic. You know, mm-hmm. how do I do it, Lord? How does my heart do it? How do I handle that? Because I had, I've always known that I, I wanted to be a very present mom who, who was extremely, um, intentional about raising my children. I, I'm going to homeschool them. And that's very important to me. It's it's a huge priority. And so I didn't want to lose that part of me that had these dreams for this literal business and this these other things in life. Yeah. But my heart was just in so much pain. And, and he, he saw me there and he met me there and gave me that revelation of you are still going to be ambitious. Um, you're going to think critically. You're going to think outside the box. You're going to help other people. You're going to pave the way for others. You are going to do all of these awesome, amazing things. But now you get to do it with this sweet little best mm-hmm. friend child, this little girl who you get to bring underneath your wing. You get to show her. You get to teach her. You get to have her with you mm-hmm. as you do these beautiful things. And so that that mindset shift was everything for me. It mm-hmm. changed the way I viewed motherhood. It was almost like I had boxed my myself into this little place of, you know, motherhood is changing my baby's diaper and feeding my baby and sitting there and playing with my baby. And like, that's where I kind of stopped. That's Mm -hmm. where it ended for me in my brain until this like really big revelation of motherhood is raising a human to do amazing things for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And what better way to do that than to live your life boldly for Jesus and bring them with you every day. And Mm -hmm. so that changed, that changed a lot for me. And that was a huge blessing. Um, wow. Getting emotional over here. I was like (laughs) tearing up thinking about it. It was, it was very special for me to be met there by, by God like that. And then my other practical thing is, you know, how do I let it not like, how do I not let business overtake my motherhood and my literal time with my kids and stuff? batch, 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 Mm. and then batch even more and then batch again. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Batch working is my life. Right now, my little babies, I have two under two. Um, Technically, like two under one and a half is what I had. But um, they're not here with me right now, literally in this physical space, because I am batching work right now. I am on this podcast. I'm working. I'm doing really awesome, beautiful, fun things for clients and the kingdom. And then in a few hours, I get to be with my babies. And mm-hmm. there are so many days where I am with my children a hundred percent. And I am not doing this type of work and I'm doing the voice to text Mm -hmm. or little things here and there, but it's not taking away from my motherhood at all and my time with them. And so being this forward thinking woman of God who wants to have a business and genuinely have a wonderful relationship with your children and being there to teach them and grow them and nurture them and all the things you have to think ahead and you have to plan ahead. You have Mm -hmm. to be strategic if you really want this, if you really want to create a life where you do have joy in both and you feel like you can live in peace and harmony with Mm -hmm. both in your life. Mm. So 
batch work for days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I batch every single thing in my business and it's made the difference for me. I so good. So I have a quick follow-up uh, question mm -hmm. about your schedule. Do you have days mm -hmm. where you're like 100% full-on mom? And then like you said, today you're batching. So is today like mm -hmm. a work day? Does that make sense where you like have a sitter yeah. or is your husband watching them? Like what is that Logistical. lifestyle choice, I guess? Or nav how do you navigate that in your family? Yeah. So it's not 100% the same every week. Like it's not like every Monday... I have a sitter from this time to this time. It's not like right. that. I look at my weeks and months as a whole, and this could go into another like very practical thing that I live by in my business, which is called my, my monthly checklist. I kind of live by the month rather than like my daily or weekly to-do lists. And I look at everything as a whole and I see what has to get done. And then I choose based on my family schedule. I schedule mm -hmm. my family first. Based on my family schedule, I look at which chunks of hours throughout the month would be really good for me to batch in. Yeah. So it's not like every Tuesday or every Thursday or something like that. It's literally like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that Tuesday because I have a doctor's appointment and this and my friend wants to get coffee and whatever. But that Wednesday from this time to this time, oh, I could get like four podcast episodes done in that time, schedule it out. Um, and then I work in that way. So mm -hmm. it's not the exact same every single week or month, but I very intentionally choose pockets of my month. Like you can literally see it on my Google calendar um, where you know that I'll have very intentional work time. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have to worry or stress in all the, all of the other white space because I know what those pockets are and I can yeah. be fully present with my children. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so, yeah, that monthly checklist is super helpful for me because it shows I literally, it's literally a Google doc and it's color coded. Pink is it's not done yet. And green is it's 100% finalized, scheduled to publish, et cetera. And it's my deliverables every month. It's mm -hmm. inside of my membership for uh, Christian coaches and service pros. Um, all the content for that monthly membership. I have the podcast, regular social media um, posts and things like that. So I have literally my deliverables written out every single month. Mm -hmm. And I get those done in my batch times and I don't have to worry about them at mm. any other time. That's so, so good. good. I love <laughs> us so much. We're, we're like over here, like systems, productivity, nerding out. We are living for it. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Amanda, what is one of the final things that you would say to someone, you know, a, a female, whether it's an active mother or a, a wannabe mother who is just feeling this sense of like, I guess relief hearing you talk because it's different from what she thought possible. Mm -hmm. And she's hearing that, you know, you can put your family first and prioritize like your faith and your family first, but that doesn't mean that you can't still have a very successful and scaling business. What would you mm -hmm. say in like kind of a final like parting encouragement or word to that woman who's listening to this episode today? Yes. Oh my goodness. First of all, I would say, my dear, wonderful, wonderful girl, you are not alone. And mm -hmm. Jesus has never left your side and he never, ever will. On your hardest day as a mom, on your hardest day as an entrepreneur, on your hardest day of both, when they both happen on the same day, that's a special day. Mm -hmm. Jesus is right there sitting mm -hmm. with you and he will never leave your side. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what happens, no matter what step you have to take in fear or in mm -hmm. faith, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. He he will be there. He is a solid foundation to stand on. Mm. So first of all, I would just encourage her in that because it is the one truth that will never fail you. Yeah. And it's the truth that will never change. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter when somebody listens to this episode. It could be decades from now. That is a truth that mm. I I would bet my life on is standing. Yeah. And so Jesus will never leave you. Um, second of all, I would say to practically really choose your business model very strategically. Mm. Be, and I say this because if you are, let's say, an extrovert, but you create a business that's really introverted, meaning you don't have a lot of connection with people, Zooms, in person, whatever it is, you are going to feel 
pretty empty and sad and stressed, and that's going to bleed into your motherhood as well. Um, if you are an introvert, but you organize live events and you see one-on-one clients every single day, that's probably going to be really tough for you to balance out in motherhood and wife life and business. Mm -hmm. So kind of a random, but honestly, life-changing tip is to (laughs) truly analyze your business model and see, is this what actually brings me joy though? Is this what I can make work as a present mom? Is this something that will work for my family and my life? Yes or no. So really look at that and and um, take some time to analyze that. Think about really, truly, what will work with my days and weeks, my months, my years? What is a blessing for my family? And if it's not, um, I know a lot of people would say, just make it work. Honestly, faith and family come first. Um, so, and that's yeah. something I really respect about you guys and the heart. Like when you downshifted the heart, mm-hmm. when I tell you that I sobbed listening to that episode, tears of a gratitude and joy and, Mm -hmm. and like just appreciation for women who are confident enough and brave enough and secure enough to say, you know what, this is all great. And I am very ambitious and I love to dream and work and all those things, Mm -hmm. but I am choosing to do something different and in a different way intentionally Mm -hmm. because of my faith in my family. And Mm -hmm. Amen to that all day, every day. Okay. Um, so when that's your perspective and when you go into business and life and work, like with that sort of foundation and mindset, um, I think that from there, you just got to follow God, pivot mm-hmm. when necessary and keep chugging. I mm. love that so much. That just was the perfect little bow wrap up. Mm-hmm. I have one more selfish question. Well, we have a selfish yeah. question uh, before we end. Do you have a favorite recent book that you've read? Just selfishly, Mm -hmm. so we can (laughs) write it down if we haven't read it. I Oh my goodness, I love books so much. I live off of audiobooks straight up. I'm not kidding. That's awesome. Live off of them. Um, So not... It's not crazy recent. I kind of read it a while ago, but it was so life changing. I know you guys know it and love it. Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. But honestly, like... A lot of people love it for the the simple, straightforward, like, boom, this is going to change your life mm-hmm. and money right here. And I do too. But honestly, like, it changed the way I viewed business as a whole. Mm-hmm. Like, it really did. And I've never approached my business and even, like, personal finances in the same way again. And honestly, every single entrepreneur I meet or get to know, like, have you read Profit First? Yes or no? You need to, and then we can talk, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and true. Then, I actually, can I say one more? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, yes. Deborah. Okay. <laughs> so this is so random. I have no idea if you guys know about these books, but have you ever heard of the Gallagher Girl series by Allie Carter? That sounds so familiar. I have heard of it. Yeah, really? I've heard of it. I haven't yes. read it. I was going to say, I've heard of it, but I don't think I've read it. They are, I'm going to sound so dumb. They are like, I want to say middle school to high school, maybe like young adult, teenage girl spy books. Okay. And that we are here so, for that. It sounds Nope, you don't so, understand. That's up. That's me. To that, a is, that is that is my genre. It is so <laughs> good heard, though. Like, YA middle school? Yes. <laughs> yes. But honestly, like they are so good. Um, so that whole series, I've read oh, it like amazing. six times, just fangirling out. Um, so different than all of the like professional self help, you know. Right. No, and we nothing to do are with here for it. business. They're just so good. So I <laughs> love it so much. I added to my list. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Amanda, you have been such a joy to chat with and connect with today for just the final like personal question. What is one of the biggest things that you've you've learned in business over all of your years if you could encompass it? Or maybe just some, one of the most recent lessons that really pops into mind? Yeah, definitely the first thing that comes to mind is business, clients, money, accomplishments, all of those things will never, ever, ever give you true and lasting freedom and joy and fulfillment 
only Jesus can do those things. Mm -hmm. And once you have Jesus as that rock and as that like true foundation that you don't just have Bible verses on your wall, but you walk right. through the mud with him. You mm-hmm. go through the tough heartbreaks with him right there and you run to him truly. All of the other fun stuff, like accomplishing things and awards and special accolades and fun business things, they become such a joy because it's this added thing in life, mm-hmm. but it's not your everything. Um, I feel like that could be a quote. It's an added thing, not everything. That's so but, good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's so true. Like I, I've i been there. It does not fulfill you. It just does not. Mm-hmm. And so that would be the first thing that pops in my head. It's, it's just truly That's have so Jesus good. as your number one period. Oh my gosh. So good. Well, Amanda, thank you for that. And thank you just for the wisdom Mm -hmm. and practical tips for this whole last hour that you have given our listeners. If they have never heard of you before this episode, and now they're like, wow, this girl, I want to know her. I want to follow her. Mm -hmm. I want to join her membership, all the things. Where can people find you? Yes. So they can find me on Instagram at pursuit.company. I hang out there all the time, see my day in the life, all the fun stuff. Um, So Instagram at pursuit.company is definitely like a super easy go-to. Definitely find me there. I actually made a super special freebie for your listeners too. Mm. That's all about like actual comprehensive scaling without stress. So it's like, it's literally like my ultimate and complete guide. The amount of value that I've put in this actually like blows my mind when I think about it. (laughs) I took like screenshots of my playbooks, literal like templates that I use. I put those in there for the six pillars of business that I mentioned earlier. That's Just like a lot of tangible stuff that that your listeners could really, I think be blessed by. And they can Mm -hmm. find that at the pursuit dot site s i t forward slash scale. So the pursuit dot site forward we, slash scale. We can also put that link in the show notes if you're mm-hmm. listening yes. on YouTube or Apple or Spotify or wherever. Uh, we'll make sure that that's included. Yes, awesome. Amanda, thank you so much for your time today and just sharing your journey, your story, and your wisdom with us. Oh, you guys, it has been such a blessing. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs>